welcome to our next idea space craft along. My name is Christy. I'm a librarian at the Public Library of Brookline and I work with our idea space program most of the time. So normally our idea space is at the library, but for right now it is at my apartment and at my friend Will's apartment, who's also a librarian here at the Public Library of Brookline. Um, Will, you want to say hi? Hello, yes, I'm Will. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, everyone. Nice to be here, Christy. Great. So um, Will also works with our idea space program. Um, so we normally teach different technology programs and art classes and different things, just encouraging people to create things um, and make something on their own and enjoy that process. Um, so we're doing that from home right now. And we're this week using some items that you might have lying around the house to make some little cycled terrariums um, and we're doing that to kind of celebrate Earth Day this week um, to encourage you all to use stuff that you have lying around the house um, so if you are following along all you'll need is some kind of old container so it's a little glass jar or I'm going to maybe use a tin this week, I think. This is a ginger mince tin from Trader Joe's. And then whatever craft supplies you have, so paper or pens or colored pencils. Um, there are no rules about what you get to use. Old magazines, I think that's what Will is going to use today. And yeah. <laughs> um, old books, whatever you have. Um, and we'll just be working with what we've got and kind of improvising as we go along. Um, so I'm going to switch the camera so you can see a little up close the kind of product that we're working on, but it doesn't have to look like what we've created before. And I'll be making something different. Thank you. Alone. So you can see I've got my tiny jar that I could use and my tin. Here is a little one that I did last week, getting ready. So it's got like a little moss and some leaves, and I actually had LEDs lying around. And then like that. Oh, that's great. And kind of this little blinky. But you could also do the same thing, just stick it in a window <laughs> and you would get light from behind. Here's like a slightly fancier one that I did once with a kit. You can kind of see what that looks like. So if you have more time and more thought, <laughs> I'm not going to be doing this scale today. Um, but this is an example of one that uses more like clay and things like that and more wiring and thinking a little harder but it's fun to think about. So today I'm just going to be using the tin so but a little jar is useful if you don't have the lid to the jar you can just use um, like a piece of cardboard or something like that cut to the same shape. So fun. in uh, if you want to do more of a terrarium look, the glass jar works really well because it kind of gives you the bell jar shape. But I also kind of like to do as an alternative, a little tiny like pocket garden type idea. So this like, can close up and then you can stick it in a pocket or you could wrap it up and give it to someone and then it has a little garden all inside. So the first thing that I want to do is just kind of think about materials that I want to use. So I have a bunch of paper scraps from magazines and like old postcards with me. I have some sticker sheets. I have a whole bunch of paper and some different kinds of felt. And so the first thing I'm going to do, and you can do this in a different order, you can come up with a concept first, or you can kind of look at your materials and then come up with a concept. I kind of like to look at the materials first and then go from there and sort of pick out things and colors that I like together. Cool. 
So do most of your scraps just come from uh, other projects and leftover things you had from that sort of thing? Yeah, I do have that big moth was from like a pack, like a themed pack of like scrapbooking die cuts. Mm -hmm. If you are good at illustrating, it is very cool to do your own illustrations, but I am not particularly good at illustrating. So, I like to use things that have been for me. That's one thing we have in common there. <laughs> oh, I have lots of, like, magazine scraps. There's a publication called Flow Magazine that I really, really like. That is literally designed to be cut up into pieces for this kind of project. That's very sort of focused on its physical self as well as the writing in it. So it's, they kind of build it to be taken apart. That's pretty spiffy. up a few things that I like and the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to clear myself a little more space because this is like a longer shape I like the idea of like doing like a little bicycle or something over here and I have this little like bicycle postcard that you can see I've already chopped into and something else at some point <laughs> And I think I'm gonna start with that and I'm gonna actually trace out the shape because it's mine's horizontal, I can actually trace the shape of the tin to kind of plan out the space and what I want to be happening in the scene. Um, and this works more like a like you can think of like dioramas from school. And if you are using like a jar, you can just estimate these or not. These are just to like help you plan out the layout of what you want and kind of help you think about what components you'd like. So if you look at, this is like not one that I designed. This is one that was pre-designed for me and I just had to put it together. You can kind of see that someone had to think about the spacing of each of these layers so that you get depth as you look back through um, and think about what's gonna be in the foreground and what's gonna be your focus and what like larger pieces might go in the back and how you might layer those things together. Um, so that's kind of what you're gonna do on paper first, just to kind of help you conceptualize what you might want to be building. <laughs> So I guess since you have a lot of this stuff, like just from previous projects and stuff, that does go pretty well with it being a very upcycle Earth Day kind of thing, huh? Yeah, I like that it is I think it's a fun one for the holiday, especially when we can't go out and like do some of the other things that we might normally do for Earth Day. If we are stuck inside maybe you're a little less apt to go out into the world and appreciate the earth in that way. Right. And to say nothing of the snow that happened just the other weekend. <laughs> <That's> terrible. <laughs> it is a chilly Earth Day this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. So I'm just kind of sketching out and these are like terrible, it's like the worst shot you've ever seen of what I think I kind of want this to look like. And if you are doing like a lot of layers, you might want to kind of draw out each layer if you were thinking if you're gonna take a little like, blazing through this today. If you were trying to be a little more detailed or take a little longer with the project, that could be helpful. 
And a lot of the stuff that's in the background, you'll notice um, on these, if you're in kind of a nature scene, it's going to be stuff like trees and stuff like that can, that can kind of give you that beautiful background sense of space. And then as you move forward, like different plants can be helpful to do that and different tech, using different textures as you go. So like you probably can't super much see anything at this <laughs> this place, but you can see my little bicycle and to keep up putting like a tree over here and some little plants and maybe I have some um wool roving that I think I might use for like leaves at the top. Um I'm just gonna kinda wing it, but this just gives me sort of a concept. Hi bud. You helping? <laughs> have another friend join in. <laughs> you love crafts? That's my mom. He is very excited that he gets to be an honorary librarian right now and hang out with us. So I'm going to start, I have some detailing scissors, so I'm just going to start on this bicycle. It can be helpful if you're doing really tiny things like this, like an exacto and I just really good too. So what's that you're cutting out right now? So this is the tiny little bicycle that I liked off of an old postcard. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I've managed to pick an extremely complicated one, so that will be fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> I do have these little detailing scissors that I like. Oh yeah, that seems like that'd be helpful for one of those smaller things. Yeah, so if you get really, you're going to need like a lot of, do some miniatures and stuff like that. Um, if you're doing a lot of them, then these are really nice <laughs> to have. Mm -hmm. um, I just cut out a nice picture of a peach because I'm thinking of summer. I love that. It just sound super good right Yeah. I just made scones last night and got bourbon berry jam. Bourbon berry jam? Wow. Yeah. Good. It felt very springtimey. Yeah. We're almost 15 minutes in, I'm just gonna like intro to anybody who's jumping in. Uh, my name is Chrissy and this is Will, and we are from the Public Library of Brookline from the Idea Space program. So we normally work at the library's new makerspace. And right now, we are making our own makerspace in our apartments. And we invite you all to grab some craft supplies and join along. We are celebrating Earth Day today, so we are using upcycled materials whenever we can. So Will is using a magazine, and I have like a you know, random object hoard from my craft closet. So I'm cutting out a, an old postcard right now, only making some little terrariums out of jars that we found in our recycling.
So have you always uh, been someone who's been into arts and crafts and that sort of thing? Um, I have done a lot. I do a lot of the design stuff at the library. I work with some of the other librarians on some of our graphic design work. It's been super mm -hmm. fun. But I never like really studied any of it. <laughs> I just did it for fun. And now I get to do it for work, which is also fun. It's great. Yeah. And I think it's a really fun time to do a lot of this because a lot of it, it like with the sort of making the movement stuff in the U.S. A lot of this stuff is a lot more accessible than it was. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are making YouTube videos like this. Um, yeah. So you said maker. What? Who's a maker? What is a maker? So the, the sort of like idea of like a maker movement in the US has been kind of focused around all sorts of different like financial apps instead of thinking of ourselves as art people or science people. Um, this kind of dichotomy of who is in technology and who is in the art. To think about us as creative people and people who make things and to encourage people who are maybe really invested and like really technically minded to try out something they're not comfortable with by trying out something artistic um, and think about how design and art can improve their work. And then mm. on the other side, to lower the barrier for folks who are really have always been involved in arts and crafts and think about how they might be able to use technology to make their art more interesting and engaging and um, just kind of break down the idea that we are naturally like one of these two things, right? That we're like yeah. scientific people or we are artsy people. Um, Oh, so that must be related to the, I sometimes hear people say the word STEAM, like an acronym, and not STEAM like the stuff that comes from a train, but like an acronym, right? Right. So that the original push was for STEM education, the science and technology and engineering and mathematics as kind of a way to make sure that kids and um, people are sort of responding to like this demand for technologically savvy um, people in the workforce. And that is super important and awesome. Um, but more recently, the favorite term has sort of switched to what the student So science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. So thinking, not sort of separating that part of yourself out. And you think about how just as integral to creating great things to have a sense of aesthetics and a sense of sort of the empathetic side of technology and user design and all of those fun things which i know like so it's it's like math adds to art <laughs> 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 Couldn't resist a good pun. We have some really good. Um, well, you work on our e resources. And I know I love using Creative Bug, and I feel their ideas constantly. Yes, yes. Create a bug is great. And uh, in case you're watching along, uh, <laughs> if you go to brklib.com slash creative bug, one word, 
that will bring you right to a page where you can look at all sorts of do-it-yourself guides for crafting and other sort of maker type activities. Uh, it's free for you to use as a Brookline resident and all you need is a library card. And so it's a good thing to know. And what I thought was really cool, because I use it a fair amount um, myself, is that the teachers that they get on there are very, very cool people. So, like, they have a collaging class that is run by an artist who worked for many years for anthropology doing their window displays and doing their like packaging design and stuff like that. Um, and so you get to learn from people who really used their art in a really practical way and um, who did it professionally for many years. So it's very cool, like people who you would not get to meet. Isn't it great that we have online resources like this to bring us closer to folks in the time of social distancing? Yeah, I am I am cruising through video content right now. <laughs> <laughs> How is your uh, your cutouts for your terrarium looking so far? How are they looking so far? They're looking good. Is I did manage to take the most complicated bicycle. I saw this really fun um, double bicycle, and I was like, "That's that's what my life needs." And now, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe maybe my life didn't need it. <laughs> no, so you started I, without the training wheels. Ah, <laughs> that's why you're here, Will. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're, we're still rolling along though. That's great. Mine is two. I have a peach and I have a spoon cut out. Ooh. Um <laughs> this was a cooking magazine. Oh uh, I was gonna say <laughs> yeah. like, very culinary. Yes, our friends at Bon Appetit uh, have a magazine, but um, of course other cooking magazines are available, uh, and many are available through the library at brklib.com. Um, you can find out how to access them there. No, I can't cut those ones out though. Yeah, you, you would do some damage to your screen if you did. Um, <laughs> and yeah. two, <laughs> the yeah. in-person ones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> Please don't cut up our magazines. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm almost there. Once I get the outer edge, that's not, that means it's not good then. Oh, paper flowers? Is that a, so, well, what's a paper flower? Oh, and you can make it out of paper? Yeah. Huh, that sounds pretty spiffy. There's some very tiny ones. So, I think I will do that next. Monster and cutting out the tiny bicycle. But it's pretty good. Wow. <laughs> it's that looks hard. so good. It's very hard to see, but it is a little bicycle. It's mostly cut out. I like to cut out the frame because then you can into it and that looks really cool. But it does take a little bit longer. I have switched over because I did the outside edge with scissors, but I did switch over to what looks like a nice Oh, one of those 
So if you are if you are a kiddo, maybe maybe be cautious. Have a have a grown up with you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or you break out the craft nerd. Uh, but let me try out, I have some paper here. That I like. Some some fun colors. So, I'm probably going to make, oh, this one's white on the other side. I don't want that. I want a double sided piece. So I maybe. Oh. Oh, those are great colors for spring. So, make a paper flower. I have some paper, and I'm going to cut a long little rectangle. Mm -hmm. And I look back to say hi. Hello. Hello, kitty. If you have wire, that's the texture in it, because then you can stick it and you can wrap it around the wire. No, But if you just get your little rectangle here and then you fold down, you shut the door. You shut the door. <laughs> you're not really bad. Shut the door. Your cat knows how to shut a door. Wow. Yeah, he's angry about it. Yeah. You didn't like that. <laughs> so I'm going to fold the corner down into a little triangle on the end. So you're making like a little folded figure. Like that. So you end up with a little piece here. And then you can just start curling that around. Just rolling the piece of paper. that you're making kind of a cone. Oh, I see. So it's like kind of rolling and folding. Yeah, just so that you get some text. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the end, you end up with a little really fun looking thing. And grass of your tiny little terrarium. Oh, it looks like we have uh, Kate, from the manager of the Brookline Library Foundation in the chat. Hi, Kate. Kate, if you're just joining us, we are making tiny, ter tiny, uh, well, upcycled, upcycled terrariums to celebrate Earth Day. And, uh, Christy is making some little paper flowers for hers. Mine are really just made uh, from some magazines I had lying around in addition to a bit of scrap paper. Uh, and I have a feeling that they will not look uh, quite as, this is really gonna look more like a three-dimensional collage piece more than a terrarium, but that's okay. My cat's attempting to pull down this entire, entire affair single-handedly <laughs> because it is too close to dinner time. 
So I want to get some stuff actually into my box. Get my blue paper that I want to have in the background of the sky. And start gluing that in. You could just use Elmer's glue or whatever you have. I have a couple different kinds of glue to kind of trial and error what will stick to the tin. I'm hearing another cat now. It's my own. It's also <laughs> getting ready for dinner time. So. I was like, we could feed him before we get started, but then that's a really early dinner, and then they will wake us up at three in the morning and want, <laughs> want breakfast. Such as a cat owner's life. I thought of a question for you. Yeah. What made you want to be a librarian, Christy? Oh, that was a good question. Um, so I was, I studied English and was kind of interested in doing like some kind of professional or technical writing. So something that you're in like working on marketing or like Reading manuals and stuff that's sort of thinking about how to translate technology or difficult and like, complex thinking into writing and design that makes sense to people who don't you know, spend their whole days around whatever technical thing you're talking about, so like the computer software like that. Um, and I was studying English and was at, I was studying abroad in England and really enjoying doing like literary studies and stuff like that. Um, but it just kind of hit me that I did not, it was too um, sort of impractical for me. Like I just wanted to, I was also doing volunteer work while I was there and sort of working one-on-one -on -one with people about with much more practical things. Um, working with some of the local homeless shelters there and felt like the thing that I liked about reading and about literature was the way that it affects people and communities and relationships and not necessarily the more abstract parts of it. Um, and I felt like that is what public librarians do. Um, is they, they care about books a lot, but they also, and they care about technology. We both work in the technology team at the library, um, but they care about it in so far as it like helps the community and is helping um, human beings, so it you know, was a way to sort of bring empathy into that kind of work. It's really fun. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great answer. Well, why did you become a librarian? I think my answer maybe has changed uh, over the years. Um, certainly not what I always imagined myself being, but it definitely is. I've decided that I like working with people and libraries draw people. We always have this image in our heads of librarians being like shushing others and things like that. But, you know, I think down at their core, every librarian, you know, what would a library be without its community? Um, so that's yeah. the fine and the biz. It's a very social job. Mm -hmm. We do not 
Usually get to read books. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We don't get to read books all day. <laughs> but we do get to make tiny upcycled terrarium. That's right. Oh. Celebrate Earth Day. So that is and pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. And I invite you to make your own upcycled terrarium, of course. I have a little guy. Oh, that's great. Yay. Nice and blue. Okay. Yes, we don't want more rainy skies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. April Finish showers. With the rain. April showers. I would like a tree. Oh, I have this fun craft paper one. I think it will be my tree. Also, I love these butterflies, but I think they're a little big for my bicycle. <laughs> but there are no rules. No rules. There could be, this could be a strange future in which they're a very big butterfly. Yeah. You don't know. I'm totally free cutting this tree. And I'm going to cheat by not including any of the tiny branches because that's hard. <laughs> I'm just going to do the trunk and I'm going to put big fluffy leaves at the top so that it doesn't matter. Boy, if that's cheating, then uh, I think my art's disqualified <laughs> a couple times over. <laughs> I encourage cheating. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> that's right. It's just more important to do a thing and not do it like correctly. Yeah. Because otherwise, do how will you ever way. start doing the thing if you don't do it? not perfect, like you're not going to go from from knowing nothing to doing it perfectly the first time. Right. It's very Bob Ross. Only happy accidents. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just, so I did a little paper tree and I want it to kind of pop out a little bit from the back. So I'm just folding the bottom so that I can glue that into the bottom edge of the tin. If you're using a jar, you could do that onto the bottom of your jar of it. So you keep gluing this up there so that it stands up as you go. So I do want a little bit of fill or something in my background though. Here's my scissors. So I heard that the library is um, helping do things like make uh, face masks and things like that. Do you know anything about that? I do know something about that. Yeah, so we have a couple of different teams of librarians and library staff who are working on a few different projects with a few different organizations. So one of those is we've been making fabric face masks. Um, that we've sent over to the Brookline Senior Center. So we took our first 50 of those over last week, I believe, which was very exciting. The weather cleared up fresh and everything. It was really nice. It was a little cloudy last week. Um, and those were being made some librarians got their own sewing machines that they were using. And then we also went into the library building just to get the uh, sewing machines that were in there for the idea space program and got those out of there so that they could be used by staff as well. And we actually did one of these craft alongs is before we were broadcasting with the folks at Big, but it is on our Facebook page. We did a little craft along where we made 
some of those hand sewn cotton masks. And they the same ones that we're making for the Brookline Senior Center. Another one of our librarians you know, is making them for the local food bank. So they can give them out along with when people come to pick up food at the food bank, they also can pick up face masks for their families. That's great. Yeah. We also, a few of us have gone over to work with the Makery and the Brookline Team Center um, on a big, big project that they've been doing with an organization called Masks for Docs that is producing fake shields for doctors in the Boston area and other healthcare organizations. And I believe they just finished a little over 20,000 face masks. 20,000? 20,000. That is such a huge number. It is a oh really big number. Um, they have it like down to a science over there. It was very awesome. Um, they have some really cool pictures of the assembly line that they've put together. It's all like a socially distanced assembly line, so nobody's close together um, while they're working. And it's really, really cool. And they had a bunch of materials donated from different local businesses um, to help make, to produce all of the raw parts. And then we're also sending to another location through that same organization, through Masks for Docs, we're making frames for a different model of base masks with a 3D printer, two of our 3D printers. The two oh. big ones. So Ada, we brought out of retirement, um, which was our original 3D printer. And then Ada's successor, Dorothy, those are two big 3D printers, and we pulled both of them out. And those are running out of staff members' house, making face shield frames and also um, uh, of the ear saver um, to help sort of those, those surgical masks get real uncomfortable if you wear them for much longer than you know your walk to the grocery store um and a whole lot of healthcare professionals are having to wear them all day all the time Ooh. yeah i think i saw a picture where someone where like a bunch of healthcare professionals they had their masks off and were smiling and you could see the marks that it was making Ooh. on their face from wearing them all day Imagine. yeah yeah, and it makes it hard for them to do, to wear them for that long. Um, it is yeah. Really painful. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I have relatives in healthcare and it's not a fun time right now, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like a little tiny thing and we're hopefully one of these future ones we're going to be doing those ear savers as well we're going to be doing like a crochet and knit one that we just got oh. Oh. so because my my crocheting and knitting skills are not super super intense but they look they look simple enough that even i can do them so <laughs> I'm well, that old. sounds great. So, and I'm gonna get get another librarian to help out with the uh, with the knitting part. My knitting skills just aren't there. <laughs> and if you're listening, and you know your knitting skills aren't there either, you know, so what? You can come along anytime. Still, try, give it a shot. And it's a great little project to give a try because it. You know, you're not going to get there's teeny tiny little strips of fabric. Yeah, I would like, I'm hoping that I can, they, the person who is going to come on and do the knitting will show me how to do it and then I can do a tiny project. Yeah. No thing. one's going to needle you for that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> 
And the great thing about any of the knitting and crocheting projects in general, I find, is that there's literally no, like you never mess up irreparably because there are things you can undo and you still have to darn. Huh. I never knew that. Yeah. Unless you're like, unless you're doing a lot of like color changes and you're like cutting behind, like you basically can just keep, keep trying again. I just got some yarn and I am trying to learn to do granny squares, which I've never done. Um, and I messed up like eight times and I just undid it and then redid it and it's fine. And I didn't lose any yarn. And it's now, like I, I like to say, the process is the product. That's very good. Okay, you did a lot of the user design studies that the library has done. That's right. Sounds like a very user <laughs> design. Thing. What is the, oh yeah, what my, one of my former supervisors used to say, used to, if something went wrong, she would just say, it's an iterative process. <laughs> it's my That's favorite right. thing, and it makes me feel better <laughs> when things go, when I feel like things are going wrong, I'm just like, nope, it's an iterative process. That's right. You just Always find out what didn't work. I actually have a couple things in here now. Look at that. Oh, that looks so good. I love the scenery. So this is just felt. I put some um, painted paper. Um, I talked about that briefly last week, but um, I'm like a huge fan of it. Um, and it was something I learned to do on Creative Bug. Um, is if you don't have like construction paper or like fancy art paper, like with patterns and stuff, um, but you do have sort of like just craft store acrylic paint. I don't have anything fancy. I just have the like Target kids paint in my apartment. Um, you can do some really cool things just kind of smearing that stuff around and creating patterns out of a few different colors. Um, if you use like an old credit card or an old library card, or something like that um, to just like scrape paint across paper and let it dry. You end up with some really cool variations. And it just gives a little more texture, again, and like dimension, whatever you're making. Ooh, what's that green material you have there? This is wool roving. It's very fun. Whoa. That's very fun. It almost looks like a, if it was white, it would look like a cobweb almost. Yeah, so this is what yarn looks like before you make it into yarn. Huh. So when you get the, I don't know that much about making things into yarn, but you can get just wool, plain wool roving like this. And then if you are a yarn maker, you can dye that wool roving, the color that you want the yarn to be, and then you spin it into yarn. But you can also use wool roving um, for a bunch of different craft projects. That's pretty fun to work with. It's fluffy and very forgiving. So this is actually oh, left over from this other kit because it has wool roving at the bottom to kind of cover if you have like lots of little tabby things from sticking your standees up then it's very useful to kind of cover those. And I'm going in with a pink pen now and just adding a little more detail to my tree trunk before I stick the leaves on here. That's so good. Nice detail. 
Yeah, and I like the kind of layering different, the more different materials, I feel like makes it look more intricate, even if it's not that intricate. I thought it feels a little more, the more little bits of different kinds of paint or pens that you use just gives it more texture. And bonus, all this glue is also left over glue from this little modeling kit. So <laughs> even my glue is upcycled today. That's great. A great way to reuse. Right. That's what I hear. Frequently people always remember the recycle part, but they, they forget about the other parts with reducing and reusing. And so plenty of opportunities to do that with everyday stuff that you buy. I like it. Oh, the texture is so good. Um, and I think I just want like a little bit of grass or something on the other side, away from the bike. And then I feel like it's doing pretty good. Success. How is your how is your um culinary? <laughs> My uh, three-dimensional collage uh, is, it is, I think it's about as done as I'm gonna have it. Um, and I like it quite a bit. Uh, want me to show it off a little bit to the camera? Love to see it. Yeah. So let's see if I can get this. Okay, so. Ooh. We're starting with a nice big picture of a peach that I found, in addition to some strawberries and a basil leaf. <laughs> and as we turn around, I also got a nice big spoon and some little, uh, I don't know what you would call these, like fleur de lis or something like that. Ooh, that's um, fun. And most importantly, on top of the basil leaf, strategically placed a big garlic clove because again, I'm thinking about summer. I'm thinking about, uh, like I said, strawberries, basil leaf, garlic uh, for like some nice caprese sandwiches. And of course a big, nice spoon. So yeah, very simple little terrarium representing my summer wishes. Well, you should do like a, a cook along. Ah, uh, that would be so much fun. I do love it. We should cooking. definitely do that. We should do a special edition of Craft Along called Cook Along <laughs> with Will. Yeah, I'd be so happy to do that. And, that awesome. But fair warning, you would have to like garlic with most things I make. So. Garlic. Or those really complicated, <laughs> what were those really complicated sugar pastries? Oh, Quinn Amon. How long yeah. did those take? A hundred years? It took all day. <laughs> so it'll be like a marathon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only the most stream. dedicated library patrons. That's right. That's right. I'm sure our friends at Big would appreciate a, an all day program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just you could just do it in like uh, five minute segments where we just check in. Oh yeah, throughout the day, see yeah. how it's going. Just like, <laughs> just be like, well, we're still making those things. <laughs> That's right. Boy, are they gonna be good? Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. So you said you're adhesing yours with crafting glue. Is that right? Yeah, I don't. So these kits don't label the glue. Mm. I don't know what kind of glue this is. It's my favorite glue in the whole world and I would love to buy more of it. I assume that it is some kind of like, maybe it's like an epoxy glue of some kind mm -hmm. or like 
it's like a modeling glue mm. for that kind of for dollhouses and stuff like that and then mm -hmm. it's like much tackier than like an elmer's or something and then i'm also using this is like a tombow glue that is like really liquidy and is good for paper stuff oh Okay. And it's nice because it has this tiny little glue tip. And then oh, so you don't like make a mess. Ginormous glue tip with like a spreader attachment. Wow. So you have options, all the options. I'm going to use this a lot next week when we oh. do collaging. <laughs> oh, next week we'll do collaging, huh? Next week, I believe it's collaging, right? Yeah. Because I, yeah, I put it in then. I, I think I'm, I think I'm good. Look, I have my little cleaner in the corner. That's so great. It's like a little pocket scenery. Anytime you need to get outside, you can just reach inside your pocket and open up your mint thing. And what I think would be really fun if I wanted to keep working on it after we're finished is here. And like That's add a bunch of idea. details because now that I'm looking yeah. at it, I'm like, oh, I was only using one of the two canvases that I had. Huh. That's so great. So it's good. That was fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch so that I can say goodbye. <laughs> Not with my hands, but with my face. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. That was really fun. Um, I hope you all enjoy making your tiny terrariums and that you'll join us again next week at the same time. So at 4 p.m. on Thursdays is what we're going to go with. Uh, we'll be doing an introduction to collaging. So it'll be a lot of the same materials, um, but we'll just be sort of matching them down all on paper. So you can get a full material list on our website, which is at drkvid.com slash events. We'll get you our calendar and you can find it on there and see what you'll need. Um, you just really need paper, magazines, whatever sort of uh, paper you have. If you have like paint or paint pens, that can be nice too because it goes over the, the glue really nicely. Um, and then just all of those glue is totally fine. Um, or if you have Mod Podge, that works too. I don't have Mod Podge, so I'm just going to be using Elmer's for next week. Um, and we'll be doing some collaging. That'll be really fun. And maybe we'll all do some more culinary collaging. That's right. It'd be great to, to be along. Thank you so much for having me, Christy. Thank you for joining me. Well, have a good evening um, and have a great rest of your week.